this episode of Wrecked. Ready? Let's dance! The Grazianas are out of town, and O'Hare needs a lead horse. The torch was passed to Mike Trakowski. Four in the morning. But the work won't end for Trike. I found the, the Titanic here. That's fresh drinking water. That's going to cause a problem for me. Oh, it's going to be a long day. Bill and Marcy hit the towing capital of the world, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, that's what we affectionately call the birthplace of towing. They hit the world's largest tow truck factory to find out how 70,000 pound rotators are born. In this side, we do all the welding. Everybody has their own things that get them going. Marcy likes shoes and I like, and I like tow trucks. It really excites me, it makes my loins tingle. And later, we do this today to remember those who are no longer with us. Bill and Marcy go to the International Towing and Recovery Hall of Fame to pay their respects at the Wall of the Fallen. It's very sad to see individuals that lose their life in the line of duty. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. It's the end of another long day of wrangling wrecks. And the O'Hare team's been working hard to handle the worst Chicago can dish out. But the day's not over for Bill and Marcy. What time do we gotta go? We gotta go now. Bye, guys. Bye. You going with your Graham? Yeah. Today, they're flying out to the towing capital of the world, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I live in Chicago, there's a very good reason. You fly nonstop anywhere. Marcy and I are on our way down to Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's actually a couple reasons that we're going to Chattanooga this year. The Miller factory is in Chattanooga, and it's what we affectionately call the birthplace of towing. But the real purpose of their trip is weighing heavily on Bill's mind. The, the Wall of the Fallen, and it's the memorial for the tow truck drivers that are killed in the line of duty. Approximately 50 tow truck drivers lose their lives on the job each year. Bill and Marcy will attend a ceremony where the names of 64 drivers will be added to the wall, commemorating those who sacrificed their lives for the safety of others. Joey's taking a trip of his own and will be hitting the open road on his Harley. That will leave veteran operator Mike Trykowski to shoulder the weight of O'Hare's heaviest jobs. He's been busy all day, and just as he finishes up, another call comes in. Trying to trek into the Dakota to White, Illinois, for the school bus that is on the creek. School bus that is on the creek. I'm gonna have 608 on soon. 608 on soon. Just outside of Chicago, drunk joyriders stole a school bus and crashed it into a creek. Operator Dennis Miles was dispatched to the scene earlier that night, but he was called away to another wreck. Trike's been yanked out of bed in the middle of the night. It's his job to get this school bus back in gear. Four in the morning, ended up getting home about midnight. Now let's go see what we've got. The torch was passed to Mike Trakowski, and I know he's capable of making good decisions when the, when the pressure's on. He'll get the job done. Is it the way I would have done it? Hmm, who knows? So we've got ourselves a school bus. This is where I get wet. One of the things you gotta be careful about when you're working near a creek bed is the wild animals. Snakes are out here. I've actually been bitten out here once. It's kinda interesting where the snake bit me. Here's the fuel tank. It's sitting on the fuel tank right here. I'm gonna set this up for a two truck side pull. 608, I'm gonna put it on the better side. I can achieve higher lift. Trike plans to use his truck in tandem with Dennis's truck, but there's a problem. 
Yeah. Hey, what's up, Craig? I got a problem. I got this big white thing in my way. Look, kind of looks like a Stay Puff marshmallow with acne. Blocking my recovery path, and they locked the damn thing up. I didn't think you were going to be down there that quick. The only other option is just gain entry. There's an old saying, the view never changes unless you're the lead horse. You know, and I tell these guys that all the time. You want to run, keep up. With Dennis out of the picture and no other options on the table, Trike takes matters into his own hands. You really hate to get me mad. I'd have this thing run and be out of here. Trike's able to unlock the truck, but he's not able to hotwire the ignition. Hey, you need a spare key in the cab of this truck somewhere? No. Uh, Unfortunately, there's only one key in that truck. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm trying to get this all taken care of. Okay, here we'll be back there in about 20 minutes, so hurry up. Hurry up. I'm starting to miss you. Coming up. Somebody needs to wake me up. I'm having that dream again. I'm driving a tow truck. Dennis finally arrives to help Trike get this bus out of the creek. Ready? Let's dance. And later, Bill and Marcy eye rotators as they go under the torch at Miller Industries, the largest tow truck manufacturer in the world. I get very excited. It's a chance to see the latest and greatest that can put a face to the to the weld, so to speak. Somebody needs to wake me up. I'm having that dream again. I'm driving a tow truck. Bill and Joey are out of town, which leaves Trike on his own to handle a school bus teetering on the edge of a creek. I'm going to set this up for a two truck side pull. Dennis returns to help Trike with this tricky tow. Got 608 hooked up to the front end. He's going to run one line down. And I found the, the Titanic here. Trike binds the wheels with heavy chain, so he'll have complete control when it's time to winch out the wreck. Take him up. The wheels are going to act like skis. We got to make sure the brake is locked. Got it? Yeah. By setting the brakes on the bus, it's going to help us achieve lift. Trike's plan is to do a two truck side pull. We're going to be able to control the steering of the truck between the two tow trucks. If he pulls harder, it's going to slide to him. If I pull harder, it's going to slide to me. And we'll literally be able to steer this bus right between us. Ready? Let's dance. Dennis, hold up. Let me catch up. There you go. Good, right there. Hold fast. We've actually physically pulled the bus out of the ditch. It's on level ground at this point. I'm gonna change our rigging. The next step is to attach chains to the rear of the bus and turn it towards Dennis's record for the final pull. Grab the back end of it and pull it right out. Good. Okay, Dennis. Now Dennis is gonna go ahead and he'll get it spun out so that we can hook it up and tow it. There you go, spin it. The last step is to rotate the bus toward the street so they can hook it up and tow it away. Come on, you think you can, you think you can. Come on, the little engine that could. Let's go, pull. Rock on, I knew we'd get it on the street. Now they hook it up and get ready to tow it back to the shop. Long night. Customers need you. They don't have the, the, the luxury of saying, today's a good day to put my truck in the ditch. Oh, it's going to be a long day. Take the calls. It's part of the life. If, I mean, if you either love it or you don't. Trike gets the job done, but there's plenty of work still ahead. 
Meanwhile, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Bill and Marcy steal themselves for their visit to the Wall of the Fallen. It's a heartbreaking ceremony, so Bill hopes for a diversion at Miller Industries, the biggest tow truck manufacturer in the world. Everybody has their own things that get them going. Marcy likes shoes, and I like, and I like tow trucks. Very excited because it's a chance to see the latest and greatest. So I can put a face to the, to the weld, so to speak. Miller Industries is the world's largest manufacturer of towing and recovery equipment. We actually have about 54 countries that we actively sell in. This is uh, the main plant. They build 30 models of light, medium, and heavy-duty tow trucks using 50,000 different parts in the process. In this side, we do all the welding. A rotator built at the Miller factory requires 350 man hours of weld time and will use a mile's worth of welding wire. From here, all the parts will go back into where they go through a shot blast system, and then we'll go over to the other side where the assembly takes place. Starts out with the subframe, and they'll put all the cylinders, the hydraulics. You know, I'm impressed with just the organization of the of, of the whole production. And then you get the parlay onto that, uh, big tow trucks. It really excites me. It makes my loins tingle. Got quite a few of the rotators now on a government contract. Hey, the truck's got like a, a gun rack. These are the winches that Joey doesn't have that he's whining about, so. Hey. We, could, we could fix that. Uh. I know you could. Uh, just a check and a PO, and I'll get whatever I want. I know it. The next big thing is he wants a 75-ton rotator. The factory tour could turn into a shopping spree for Bill. Honey, it's red. But not if Marcy has anything to say about it. This is what he wants. With the exception of it being red, if it was white, we'd be going home with it. But it's cool. If you really, truly want to get the truck you're dreaming about, well, then you have to order it. A lot of these guys like them fixed up. A lot of little extras. Each one gives them that own personality. I like it. Every year they come out. I don't out want to hear about it. Please, every year they come out with a little something different so that you go, oh, I have to have it. I have right. to have it. it. Be added on and I'm the voice of reason going. Marcy is the voice of reason. Sometimes she'll put her foot down and say, oh, no, that's not possible. Reality is, is if I really want it, I'm going to buy it anyway. Coming up. A monstrous man lift threatens to crush a water pipe with 40,000 pounds of solid steel. That's fresh drinking water. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's gonna rip a hydraulic line. And trike tussles to turn it loose. Go ahead. And later, Bill and Marcy salute the sacrifice of deceased operators at the Wall of the Fallen. See the little kids not gonna see their dad. It's heart-wrenching. With Bill and Joey away, veteran operator Mike Trykowski is working double duty. I'm beat, dude. A call comes in from dispatch. On 8 Trike 310, I need you to start heading out 255 southbound mile marker 212. It's absolutely hysterical. It is frustrating, a lot of sleepless nights. That's what it takes to be in the front of the line. A massive man lift is sinking into a muddy trench. Worst of all, the sinking lift is resting just above a pipeline running from a tower that supplies the area with fresh drinking water. Let's go take a look. I've always took pride in the fact that I'm going to be the first one in the fight. We've got a 120-foot man lift, and what had happened is, is that as they were moving, the ground gave way. One of the tires of the 40,000-pound lift is stuck especially deep in the trench. Trike has to rescue the lift before its weight crushes the water pipe. I have one wheel that's really badly stuck. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's gonna rip a hydraulic line. If I rip a hydraulic line, that's fresh drinking water. That's gonna cause a problem for me. With the water pipe less than three feet beneath the surface, Trike has to carefully reposition the 40,000 pound counterweight. This back here is a solid block of steel. That's to compensate for two men being in that basket prevents the machine from flipping. I'm going to put, swing the counterweight over to the high side so I don't have to try to pull that weight out of this hole. What that's done is that's actually taken all this weight 
off this wheel. And I've taken him out of my recovery path. With time running out, Trike moves his wrecker into position. One wrong move and Trike's truck will slip into the same swamp that swallowed the man lift. It'll be a hard pull. I'm gonna double up my cables. The muddy terrain reduces Trike's traction, so he uses snatch blocks to double his pulling power. I'm actually gonna run two two-part lines, which is gonna give me the maximum pulling effect. With the truck in position, it's time for Trike to pull the man lift to safety. Go ahead. He's gonna turn those tires so we don't blow the hubs. Slower. Watch your vertical. Straighten the rear wheel out. That's it. Ho! Ho! There's a problem. They're telling me that there's a trench right here. That's real soft ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him actually move the counterweight over to the other side. So it's gonna put the counterweight on good ground. Space is tight, so this is a dangerous procedure. Keep going. Tree. There you go. Trust me, I won't let you hit my truck. There you go. Go ahead and boom it down. Keep going. Okay. Now that the weight has been properly repositioned, Trike can pull the lift away from the ditch and onto solid ground. Slower. Slower. We're there. Trike is able to muscle the man lift out of the mud, saving the water line and the fresh drinking water from a major disaster. Hey, what? She was a heavy little booger, wasn't she? I love it when it's challenging like that. I've got another one after this. That's what keeps the days interesting. You either love the job or you hate it. I love the job. I'm a little tired. I want to just relax tonight. I think I'm going to go to sleep early. Coming up, Bill and Marcy head to the Towing and Recovery Hall of Fame and then honor the heroes of the towing industry at the Wall of the Fallen. My husband, Mike Cunningham, was killed um, while towing a vehicle in June of 2008. The city of Chattanooga, Tennessee is famous for being the location of the Towing and Recovery Hall of Fame. Founded in 1986, the Hall of Fame commemorates the leading figures in the history of towing and recovery. This is Bill's dad, Jack. An important piece of the Towing and Recovery Hall of Fame is the Wall of the Fallen, a memorial devoted to those who have lost their lives in the service of others. Today is the memorial service for the tow truck drivers that are killed on the line of duty. We thought it was a beautiful place to have it, one in Chattanooga because it's where tow trucks started, and two with the museum to tie in the history. It's a great honor to have a place for them to be remembered, but it's still very emotional. Can you find Daddy's name? Is he on this side? Yep, he's on that first floor. Someone had tried to steal my husband's tow truck. He went outside to try to stop the person, and the person ran over him. Ran over him. Killed him. But we talk about their daddy all the time. Just try to do everything I can to make sure that they don't forget him. You see the family that's left, and you see the little kid that is not going to see their dad. I mean, it rip your heart out. There are 95 names on the wall of the fallen. And today, 64 more will be added. These are men and women who have lost their lives while serving others. Thank you. Please be seated. We do this today to remember those who are no longer with us and give tribute to the loved ones by placing their name on this wall. Christopher A. Sisk. Michael E. Cunningham. My husband, Mike Cunningham, was killed um, while towing a vehicle in, in June of 2008. 
his name is going to be put on the Wall of Fallen. A semi-driver did not get over in the lane. He ran off the side of the road and ran over my husband. I have to stay together for my sons because <laughs> I'm all they have right now. It's kind of, it's emotional and it's, it's scary and it's, it's something that hits close to home. You forget just how fragile life in general can be. Clyde Stewart, W. David. This is my husband, Clyde Stewart. This is him and the grandbabies. Clyde was on a call. A young man had ran off in the creek. We had high waters at the time. He went in to try to hook to the vehicle and he was standing on top of the car. The current was so swift, they swept him and the car away. I was devastated. He never took life for granted. His main goal in life was to help others. And that's what he enjoyed doing. He just loved people. You never know how much time is left in a tower's life that can be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real. Very emotional for me because every day the, the potential for that to happen for one of my guys or myself or one of my family members is there. And quite frankly, it's a club I don't want to be in and I hope none of my guys are in. Definitely is a dangerous job that we have very little protection at. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the event for today. And uh, please accept our heartfelt sorrow for your loss. David C. Gilmer, Bruce Harwell Jr., Paul N. Harding, Kenny M. Harris, Richard L. Davis, Dennis E. Devaney, Reed L. Fitcham, Ralph E. Fox Reynolds.